I'm all about perfecting your craft as an artist. That's why I started shooting film. There's something about keeping a camera with you at all times that forces you to be present in search of that next image to inspire you, maybe inspire the world. But between the cost of film, lab development, high-risk scans, I quickly realized I had chosen an expensive hobby. So today, I'm going to try scanning my first roll of film. There are many ways to scan your film, but I've decided to use my Canon R5. The first thing we're going to need is a way to mount it. I found this beautiful copy stand on Facebook Marketplace for only 30 bucks. Honestly, it might be my best find yet. Not only will it allow me to mount my camera at any adjustable height, but it also adds a really warm retro feel to my office. There are two main reasons why I'm using my digital camera to scan my film. The Canon R5 has amazing pixel quality, which means I'm gonna be able to get some really high res scans out of it. And two, it has focus peaking, so I can easily identify when my film is in and out of focus. Speaking of focus, you're also going to need a macro lens. This will help you capture all the fine detail of your film at a closer focal distance. To keep your film flat as you scan it, you'll need a film carrier. These can range from fairly cheap to pretty expensive. I invested in the 35 and 120mm film carriers from Negative Supply. And we can't forget about our light source. You could go with a cheap option for your panel light, like using your iPhone but I'm more interested in the quality of light. That's why I went with this version from CineStyle. You can adjust the color temperature based on the kind of film you're scanning. These last two items aren't necessary, but are nice to have. A leveler will help ensure your camera and film are on the same plane of focus. An air blower will help remove dust that collects on your film. All right, let's jump into it. So the first thing we need to do is change the channel mode. So we're gonna go up to settings and then under exposure, and make sure this channel mode says red, green, and blue channels. I currently have my R5 tethered to my laptop. I think shooting tethered is gonna make this a lot easier for you guys. I'm gonna be able to see my images as I scan them. So I have everything lined up. My camera's mounted on my copy stand. My film is at the first frame. I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture. The first thing we're gonna do is set the white balance. So the simplest way to do this is gonna be using our white balance tool and selecting a non-exposed part of the film. So I'm gonna select the part right outside of the film along the border, perfect. So now that we've set the white balance, we're gonna crop the frame so that we can only see the image. This is really important for the inversion process. We don't want any data that's coming from the border of the film to make its way into the histogram. All right, so now we only have our photo in frame. Now, if you do wanna include the frame in your scans, once the inversion process is done, you can adjust the crop to include the frame. We're gonna use a linear response curve. So at the top here, we're gonna go over to style under base characteristics. Um, this ICC profile should be set to whatever camera you're using. And for our curve right beneath that, we're gonna set this to linear response. So the next thing we're gonna do is go back over to this adjust panel and scroll down to levels. You're gonna see a little magic wand here. This is the auto adjust levels. We're gonna go ahead and click that. Boom, now we see a big change in our image here. So now we are at the inversion step. If we scroll down to the curve, and there are two ways of doing this. One, you can invert the red, green, and blue individually. Or two, you could simply invert the RGB. For simplicity, I'm just gonna invert the RGB curve here. All we're gonna do is, you see this is going from our bottom left to our top right. I'm gonna take this bottom left slider, put it at the top there. Our image looks pure white, but once we slide this down, boom, we have now successfully inverted our image and that is looking pretty good already all right now that we're set up i'm going to go ahead and scan the rest of this roll i really haven't been shooting film for that long i started shooting film about a year ago when i took a trip outside of the country to portugal i bought a film camera with the intention of shooting it on the trip i figured if i'm intimidated to learn 
why not take it on a trip where it's going to be impossible to take bad images? And that's exactly what happened. I absolutely fell in love with shooting film and I've had the bug ever since. What shooting film has taught me so far is just to slow down, to slow down my process, to slow down the way that I engage with taking images, the way that I compose images, the planning that goes into a shoot. There's something about shooting digital too that removes that ownership of the process. You know, you pick up a digital camera and you take an image, but you don't really know how that image was created. It's Amazon, it's that quick, everything is at your fingertips. And you don't have to work as hard for the image. Having a limited number of photos to be able to shoot really forces you to be very intentional about the images you are taking. And it just really slows down your practice. And ultimately, I think that's a really good thing. These images are looking amazing so far. I think I'm gonna go ahead and scan a couple of other rolls. I consider myself to be pretty detailed when it comes to pre-production. I put together mood boards, I put together shot lists, I schedule time for exploration. But every shoot that I show up to, I can plan all the shots in the world. Which ones are gonna be the most impactful? Which shots are really going to tell my story? And ultimately I prioritize those. So shout out to Shooting Film, it's amazing.